Hey everybody, today we're going to be talking about the export data module in PMAT. First, we're going to focus on how to use this module. And this is fairly straightforward, but there are some details that might be important for some of you as you're trying to get this working. And then second, and possibly more importantly for this module, we'll discuss a few examples of why this module is more important than you might think for the PMAT workflow. It's not simply a module for exporting data and saving it elsewhere. There's a lot of circularity in the way that you can use PMAT, and so we're going to provide a couple of hints there. As usual, if you have some questions about the PMAT suite, uh, especially in this case about the export data module, feel free to comment below this video and we'll get back to you and discuss it more. Or you can visit www.thebarkerlab.com and find contact information there for the laboratory. Feel free to reach out to us. To use the export data function, you will have first loaded in some data. And if you don't yet know how to load in data, then you can go to our video that shows you uh, how to load in specific types of data, whether through the single Tucker Davis data format or through the import data menu that you can find here. Once you have your data loaded in, you should see the export data module with three different check boxes, one here for the photometry signals, one for all your event data, and then another for individual event data. And then down at the bottom, the ability to save these as a CSV file or a comma separated value file. So when you come in to use the export data module, then all you have to do is click the type of data that you would want to export. The photometry signals is going to contain the timestamps as well as data for your control and your signal channels. The all event data file is going to contain both a name as well as the onset and offset times for any events, whether those are behaviors or other experimental events that you've recorded, and it will put those all together in one file. Or if you have a good reason for separating the individual events into separate files, then you can click the individual event data file checkbox here. So click any or all of these. In this case, we'll click all of them. And you can also, for the individual event data, decide which individual events you would like. You can click a single event, or if you'd like to select multiples, you can either use the control key or the shift key on your keyboard um, or the Mac equivalents of these in order to highlight and select multiple items. Or you can simply hit the select and deselect all, and this will allow you to select the entire group simultaneously. And if you ever need to reset the window, you can hit the deselect all here, and it will not only take away all of your selections in, in the drop down menu here, but also all of the checkboxes. So let's reselect these again, and we'll select our three events of interest here, and then we'll hit save CSV file. You'll see this waits for a second, and then it's going to tell you that the files have been successfully saved in the working directory under the data folder. You can hit OK then. And if you forget exactly where these files might be, this is why we have this convenient copy file path button. You're going to use this a lot, I'm sure. And this will allow you to come in to your file management system and you can copy that path. And sure enough, then right within the data folder, you're going to find a series of these Microsoft Excel. In my case, is the program it lists as the default, but these comma separated value files. And you can click and open them. So for the individual event data, you'll see the event name listed ahead of event data as the suffix for the, the title here. And you can click and open these. And inside of these files, what you're going to find is exactly what I described. The event with some sort of an identifier for the event, the onset time, and the offset time. 
In the case that an event lasts longer than the end of the file, you'll see this INF here for infinity. That just means that there was no true offset time for that event. If you want to look at all of the behavioral data, or all of the events in this case together, then they'll be under this behavioral data file. And you can see here a very similar format where we have event identifiers, in this case, all three that we observed in this particular file with the onset and the offset times. And then lastly, we can come in and find the calcium data or the neurotransmitter sensor data, whichever that it may be for you. As I said before, you'll have one column with timestamp, a column for your signal data, and a column for your control channel, all coming straight out of your data file. So that's somewhat straightforward. So let's talk about at least three other uses that make this tool more important than you think that it might be. Well, first and foremost, one of the goals of PMAT is that individuals that don't have coding experience can use this in order to gain access to their fiber photometry data. So if you're using this to gain access to your data, all you have to do is, let's say, load in a Tucker Davis Technologies data file, and then you can take this data and bring it to another software suite that you're more familiar with. For example, many electrophysiologists have found that their native programs, um, one example would be Spike2, can work for certain aspects of data analysis when it comes to calcium data. So if that's something that you would prefer to do or you wanted to make that attempt, you could come in and you would have quick access to the calcium data. The second thing that you would find is that you might have instances where you need to remove artifacts from your recording. And so the beauty of using these comma separated value files is that you can open them in Microsoft Excel, a program that many individuals are familiar with, and you could easily come in and you could plot your data. It might take a few seconds when you have a very large data file, but you can plot your data in order to examine the file here for artifacts. And if need be, you could find the exact timestamps and you could select and delete large rises and falls um, if you had the animal become disconnected uh, from the hardware for a few minutes or a few seconds, if there um, was a problem with the LEDs shutting on and off, if you had to make a power adjustment to the LEDs or something like that, you could come in and you could eliminate those specific time points in order to have uh, a smoother overall recording. And because we retain the timestamps here, then the PMAT program would still know where those where the portions of the recording are. And it's not a huge deal in to eliminate um, large artifacts that might create problems when trying to smooth out other aspects of the file. The final reason that you might want to use this is that it provides you with an easy way to edit the behavioral events. So let's say, for example, in the case of this event 2064, we were to open this and you wanted to look at an analysis of early versus late trials, then you could easily come in and we can see that there are 10 trials here. You could take one, two, three, four, five off the back end, and we can give this a new name. Let's just call it E for early. And we'll name all of these in the exact same way by just pasting this over and over again down the row. And we can come in, we can hit File, Save As, and we'll call this the event 2064 early. We can close this. We'll still have our original event data. And now we have this 2064 early. We can open this again. And in this case, delete the first one, two, three, four, five trials. And we could give these a slightly different name as well. We'll give them an L for late. 
drag them down or copy them and paste them. And again, come in and hit File, Save As, and we'll save these as 2064 late. The beauty of this is that when we get back into the PMAT suite, we have the ability to import data. And because these are already set up in the native format, then if we want to come in and we want to append extra event data, then we can come in and we can append the early, which we've added the E, and we now see that in here. And we can also come in and append the data for the late, bring that in as a separate event. Or you could simply use this as a way to filter out bad trials and bring them back in as the 2064 corrected or anything of that nature. So this gives you the ability to have that circular flow in PMAT where you can import and export as you need to. And then you can take these data and either use them again in external programs or bring them back into PMAT so that you can create peri-event time histograms from the early versus the late data. You can do all of the other analyses that you would like. You could even plot the trace data with early versus late data. These are now populated in the rest of the PMAT suite, and they've given you a very easy way to make those modifications um, and to not have to write code to be able to make these simple kinds of changes. See you all next time.